Guess I'm going through a phase of feeling kind of low I never leave the house, but I'm not home Can't tell if I'm awake or living in a dream A caterpillar drifting down a stream I just want to fly away, but I can't Ten reasons why I love the Fujifilm X-Pro3 so if you're familiar with this channel at all, you might be asking yourself, why is Zach talking about the X-Pro3 again? Aren't we like past this? And my answer for you is, well, here are 10 reasons why I'm talking about the X-Pro3 still. Hi everybody, my name is Zach. I'm a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. And the first reason why I love this camera is the size and weight. Fujifilm's X series of cameras is known for being small, compact, lightweight, cameras when compared to their larger DSLR and mirrorless siblings. They accomplish this by featuring an APS-C size sensor. So the sensor is smaller than full frame and allows Fujifilm to create these really amazing little cameras. It's a camera that you can pick up and take with you everywhere. It's not gonna kill your back after holding onto it for a day. You can throw it in your bag and forget it's there. It's a camera that you just wanna pick up and use. Number two is build quality. So the X-Pro range is known for their superior build quality. It comes with a little bit of a higher price tag, but you're getting a really premium product. In the case of the X-Pro3, this camera is extremely well built. It feels very premium. It has titanium plates on the top and bottom. It's made in Japan. It's just all around a really well built piece of gear and you can tell when you pick it up. Like sometimes it's just sitting on my shelf and I just pick it up just to hold it because I'm kind of weird, I guess. Number three is the viewfinder. So this is pretty obvious, but the X-Pro is a rangefinder inspired design. So it features a viewfinder, which is on the left-hand side of the camera if you're shooting, the right-hand side of the camera if you're looking at it. And so when compared with the common placement of a viewfinder, which is in the center of the camera, the offset positioning of the viewfinder allows you to shoot with half of your face visible. So it allows you to connect more with your subject than if you were, you know, completely covered like this. Now, this <laughs> isn't as true if you are left eye dominant as me, because I still am gonna prefer to shoot like this, although I'm training myself to shoot like this. So just keep that in mind. But for a lot of people, I think this is a huge benefit, being able to really connect by having your face not completely covered by the camera. Now the viewfinder is special for more than just its placement. The viewfinder in the X-Pro3 is a hybrid viewfinder. So it's an electronic viewfinder, which is similar to a viewfinder you would find in other mirrorless cameras. But if you flip a switch, it becomes an optical viewfinder. So you are seeing through the glass of the viewfinder, but there's an electronic overlay that shows you your exposure reading and your frame in a box, and the box changes size depending on what lens you have on to show you what your frame will be. It's a really interesting way of shooting. There's also a third option to the viewfinder, and that is a sort of dual view where you're using the optical viewfinder with the digital overlay, but you also have a small electronic viewfinder that's magnified, a little box in the bottom right hand corner so you can see your focus and your uh, exposure. I find that I'm typically using the electronic viewfinder because it just works so great and I love seeing my exposure, my film simulation before I take the photo. But I have found that when I'm shooting in the studio and I'm exposing for my studio strobe, the EVF just will just show you a blank frame because it's exposing for the strobe and it thinks that you're underexposed to the natural light. So in those situations, I love just flipping the switch to look through the optical viewfinder because then I'm just looking through the glass and I can also connect more with my subject in a studio setting and I actually really enjoy shooting like that. Number four is the hidden LCD screen. So this is sort of a polarizing aspect of the X-Pro3. It is very specific to the X-Pro3 particularly. So basically what it means is that the default position of the LCD screen is hidden away. It's folded against the back of the camera 
I quite like this. I think it's very refreshing. It's so different from my other ca cameras and other cameras that I've used. It really makes you use the X Pro 3 in a way that you don't use other cameras. It also just protects your screen and makes the camera really streamlined. You can just throw it in a bag and not really worry about scratching the screen or, or anything like that. It makes the camera a little bit more rugged, I think. And it just, it encourages you to use that amazing viewfinder. I have said in past videos, if you are somebody who uses the LCD to shoot, you're not gonna love the X-Pro3 because it's annoying to use the LCD to shoot. It, it's just folded down. It's kind of like, it's not, not so bad, but not ideal. It's not really what this camera was designed for. And if you're reviewing images and having to constantly fold the screen up and fold it down, that is also kind of tedious. But again, not really what this was designed for. This camera is designed to encourage you to just shoot. It's designed to take you out of the technology and bring you right to the photography, which is really cool. Number five is the dual SD card slot. This is something that is so useful for professional cameras to have a redundant copy of your images as soon as you shoot them. What I love about the X-Pro3 is that not only are there dual memory card slots, but these are both SD card slots. And in the menu, you can adjust the settings to shoot to one card in RAW and shoot to the second card in JPEG. And this is awesome because it gives you a copy of your photos and on one SD card, you can have the raw photos with all of the data in case you need all of that data. And on the other card, you can have your JPEG files, which are just ready to go right out of camera. It's really awesome. So that means that you can just use the JPEGs. And if you happen to need extra information from the raw files, you have those as well. Number six is the Fujifilm film simulations. I've made a couple of videos about this, but basically Fujifilm offers color profiles known as film simulations because they emulate types of film looks. The X-Pro3 comes with one of the newer ones, which is the classic negative film simulation, which I've made a couple of videos about. It's one of my favorites along with classic Chrome. It looks so good. And more than that, you can adjust your color and settings like you know, your curve, your sharpness, grain, clarity, all of those settings you can adjust right in the camera and save custom settings. You can save up to seven custom settings and just shoot. And then your JPEG is embedded with all of that color information. So when you copy the JPEG file from the SD card, your image is already there. It's colored, it looks great. This basically means you can do some post-processing in camera before you even press the shutter, which is just so cool. I just, I love this about Fujifilm. Number seven is the lens selection. I currently have three Fujifilm lenses. They're all the F2 lenses. I've gone through several lenses since I got the X-Pro3, but I've arrived at having the 23 F2, the 35 F2, and the 50 F2. And I've chosen these three lenses to keep these three lenses because they're really great. They're relatively inexpensive and they're all small and compact. And what I love about the X-Pro3, as I said at the beginning, is its size. And when paired with these small F2 lenses, it's just such a nice package and it really works well with the camera. So I have my bigger, faster aperture lenses that I use with my Canon system. And then with Fujifilm, I have my smaller F2 lenses that work so great with the X-Pro3 and allow me to really enjoy the experience of shooting with the camera. Number eight is video. So this camera takes really great video. It shoots in 4K up to 30 frames per second, 1080 up to 60 frames per second. So it is a pretty nice video camera. The quality looks really great. You can also shoot with all of Fujifilm's film simulations, including Eterna, which is a really popular one for video. But again, you could shoot with classic negative in this camera if you really wanted to. And it's really nice that Fujifilm kept these great video features in the camera. Uh, because it can be quite a useful uh, B cam or C cam if you if you need it. It's not the video master, but it is nice to have that that feature. So number nine is something that people might not really seem like they care about, but I think it's important, and that's the aesthetics. Like this camera looks so good. Like nobody can argue that this camera is not good looking. It's a camera that you are proud to take with you wherever you go. And like for me, I just put it on a strap and just 
take it with me to the most mundane of like everyday activities because it's so small and light and it looks so cool. It's like this great accessory. I know that's like a very like minor thing and it's not really important in the grand scheme of things, but what it means is that I have my camera with me more often than I normally would. Like I, I've taken my X-Pro3 with me to places that I would never take my Canon camera because I just am self-conscious about having a really big, bulky, looking camera it's like what are people going to think but with the x pro 3 it's like yeah I, of course i'll take that out it's really cool it's sleek it has a very minimal profile so that means that it comes with me to situations that i wouldn't normally have it and so i make photos that i wouldn't normally make and that's a really interesting feature like it's one aspect of the aesthetic of the camera that i think is is important because it changes how you use it, at least in my experience. And finally, number 10 is probably the most important one. So all of the things that I've described contribute to making this a camera that just inspires me to shoot, to think about photography differently. I've said before, but this camera really changed the way that I shoot. It changed the way I think about photography and not because of what the camera is, but because of what it did for me, because of how it inspired me to shoot and to make different images. It just, you know, it makes you slow down and think about what you're shooting because you can shoot directly to JPEG and you can determine what you want those to look like in the camera so that after you shoot, the image is ready to go. And so that encourages me to just like really get the exposure right and the composition right so that I don't have to do any post-processing. The hidden LCD screen encourages me to look through the viewfinder to really compose my shot. It encourages me not to like look back through my images as much, to just shoot and wait till I get home to look at the images. It's just a different way of, of using a camera and it really has, like I said, it's changed the way that I think about taking photos. So there you have it, 10 things I love about the X-Pro3. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment down below if you're an X-Pro3 user. Tell me why you love your camera. Let me know if there's something I missed. There probably is. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Subscribe if you're new here. I'd love to see you at the next video. Thanks guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Love is free,